But let's dive into this Kentucky team. So I, I like to do this about once a week. I especially like it at this point of the year because it is halfway over. So, like, we finally now have, Jake, what I think are representative sample sizes, right? This is not a situation, really, where you have to be like, oh, well, this team played these bad teams, this team played... No, no, you kind of are... The numbers are really starting to dictate who you are yeah. at this point. And everybody's played bad teams. Everybody's played a couple conference teams at this place, right? Well, uh, okay, so let's just do a quick overview here. Scoring offense. Kentucky is ninth in the SEC, 28.8 points per game, so basically 29. LSU 7th at 31. Scoring defense. Kentucky's really good here. They are 4th in the SEC, giving up under 17 points a game. LSU 10th at 23 points per game. Rushing offense. I was a little surprised here. Considering they have the top individual runner in the entire league, but Kentucky yeah. just seventh in terms of yards per game at 191. Uh, passing offense, they're 11th at 208. Rushing defense, they're fifth at 104. And passing defense, they are sixth at 180. I don't even know if you need to give the rushing defense uh, totals here. Uh, for who? For LSU? No, for Kentucky's defense because uh, you know, LSU's. It could oh, be, it could I be 14th. Okay, okay, okay. I, was, I was looking for the angle. Yeah, yeah. yeah it could yeah, be 14th, yeah. and I'd be like, yeah, it's so. Yeah, so you always discover a few fun ancillary facts as you're looking through these charts, and this is not a fun one for LSU fans, but Mississippi State and LSU are dead last in rushing, and it's not even close. I think LSU's at like 70 yards a game. That's 13th, 12th place. I can't remember who it is, but they're at 120. So you are 50 yards behind the – Next to last uh, SEC rush team. Yeah, it's not good. 50? Um, 50. Yeah, it's like 120 to 70, yeah. I believe, is what it is. Uh, Kentucky's 4 or 5 on field goals, LSU 8 8, so LSU definite advantage, as it will have against anybody in the conference when it comes Country, to keeping yeah. field goals. Uh, here's a fun fact these are the two least penalized teams in the SEC. How about that? LSU is the least penalized. Mm-hmm. Didn't even, never really thought about that this year. Only four penalties for 34 yards a game, which actually is about 10 yards. And one penalty better than Kentucky. So LSU, by a pretty wide margin, the least penalized team in the SEC. Um, Coach O mentioned this yesterday. This is mind-blowing, Jake. Kentucky is dead last in the SEC in the turnover department. That's a little scary. Because how do you end up at 5-0 and when you're minus 9 and dead last in turnovers? That means you're playing a lot of good football to overcome some really big mistakes. Yeah. It's hard to wrap my head around. Yeah, their quarterback, Will Levis, is someone who will take a lot of chances, and some of them come from that. But really, Chris Rodriguez, the fumbles he's had in the last couple of weeks, that's where a bulk of the minus nine comes from. I mean, he's had real trouble holding on to the football. So should he put the gloves back on? I think he took them off because yeah, he, took them off because he was having of the so fumbling, many right? troubles. I so mean, has he fumbled since he took the gloves off? Probably. Okay. I mean, okay. it's been that frequent. But he's such a good runner that – Kentucky continues to get in the ball because yeah. he's leading the SEC in rushing, but he has a real issue with fumbling the football. I think he's lost. I'll, I'll look at it. I think he's lost four fumbles already this year, which that's that's too many for a career. Yeah, yeah, for real. Right? Certainly in the first uh, five games, he, he lost. He's lost one fumble for every fourth down conversion you had fourteen years ago today. Uh, did you have all four or five? Did you have all five yourself that day? What? The fourth down conversion? No, 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 I had three. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, so he's lost one more fumble. There we go. Um, even with no sacks last week, LSU still tied for the lead league. Lead league, whatever, you get it. Uh, 18 sacks for the Tigers. Kentucky, 13th in the SC, only nine sacks. But they're a little more disruptive in the run game. Seventh in TFLs. LSU still second in that department. Um, LSU and Kentucky right at about par with each other in terms of allowing pressure. Nine sacks for Kentucky allowed this year, 11 for the Tigers. They've both tied, giving up 21 TFLs per year. Okay, so as you can see, interesting so far, Jake, is that nothing really jumps off the page, right? right. Like, everything's pretty equal. You, you start to see why Vegas had this as a pick with Kentucky just getting the home bump. Uh, here, here is maybe one key area that could separate to look at. Kentucky is very good on third down. Uh, they are fifth in the SC. They convert at 47%. So they're right at there about that coin flip rate that if you're hitting, that's great. LSU, on the other hand, very bad at getting teams off the field on third down. They allow 46% conversion. They're one of only two teams above 40%. So that's not good, Jake. I, I, I see a Kentucky huh. team that is 
because they run the ball, they're good at getting to third and manageable. And LSU is going to have to do a better job this week of managing to turn third and manageable into fourth down and off the field. Yeah, because this isn't an offense that you can play like the bend, don't break and try to make them make a mistake. I mean, it's a completely different offense. They're coming downhill. They want to set up, like you said, third and shorts. So you've got to do a really good job on first and second down. They're going to run the football in those downs. They want to create a short yard situation on third down. So it's it's going to be a challenge for LSU because the last two weeks they've played a different style of defense and they're going to play this week because Auburn playing from behind, they weren't really themselves. They had to to be more pass happy than they typically yeah. are. Huh. Like when you look at the first couple of games, I mean, they're only like throwing like 20 attempts in games where they scored 60 points. I mean, they were a running football team, but playing from behind, you know, Tank Bixby and, and Hunter weren't really as involved in the game plan. Yeah, and 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 Auburn still though, uh, that's one of the things that Bobo did very well is he got them into those those third and shorts. Man, LSU's pass rush stats could be out of control. If they just could have tackled Bo Nix. Uh, that sucks. Um, okay, last kind of team stats here. Then we'll take a break. We'll return with the individuals that you should be aware of. Uh, Kentucky very good, or excuse me, uh, yeah, Kentucky very good at scoring touchdowns when they get in the red zone. So uh, they have a seventy-two percent touchdown rate in the red zone. LSU was elite at this until last week, and the wheels came off in the red zone, and they dropped all the way down to eighth at just a sixty-four percent. Converge rate in both LSU and Kentucky allow opponents to score about 65% of the time. That's touchdowns. And neither team's a really big play team. So really, Jake, as we move out of uh, just the team stat comparison, my big takeaway is that LSU has a huge advantage in the turnovers department, plus 2 to minus 9, while Kentucky has a huge advantage in the third down department, which is also critical. But otherwise, these are two very... Evenly matched teams statistically. They are, and I'm even a little surprised as you broke down some of the rushing totals and some of the other stats for Kentucky, even allowing uh, you know the sacks that they have. That's yeah. a little surprising because when you watch the tape, and we did a little bit yesterday during the commercial breaks, their offensive line is physical. They've got punch, and they will pop you when you're rushing. Yeah. So uh, going to go back and try to watch some of those sacks. I, I know some of the technique issues get them in trouble a little bit in uh, – pass protection, but still that, that number considering who they have up front is a little surprising. So yeah, I, I would have had Kentucky in more favor than the stats tell. Yeah, I still don't I, I, I still don't love and I mean and they're five and oh and you're three and two, right? I and I still don't love it on a matchup standpoint because I, I, I think that their O line, although your D line's very good, their O line does match up better with uh your D line than than if the situations were reversed. I feel like I just made that really complicated. I, I it's very easy what I'm trying to say, but it's not working. So let's go ahead and go to break, and uh, we will get back, and we will talk about the players that you should be on the lookout for, the names you want to know for this weekend, so you can sound smart as you're like hanging out with your friends and you're watching yeah. at the watch party, yeah. and you're like, I, mean, I told you to watch out for this guy. You tell them that before the game, and then you get to be like, I told you what to do. Okay, so we'll do that next. Here on OTB. Uh, yeah, man. Okay, so let's talk. So this is our little water cooler preview. If you want to sound smart on Saturday as you're eating pregame foods, getting ready for the yeah. 6 o'clock kickoff, these are the names that you need to know. Offensively, Jake, obviously Will Levis is a quarterback, but the guys to know there is a massive one-two punch here. So Chris Rodriguez Jr. is the running back that leads the SEC with 20 carries a game, leads the SEC with 124 yards per game. He scored four touchdowns. He averages six yards a carry. Uh, what have you seen out of Rodriguez this year? You're going to know exactly who he is and where he's at because he'll let you know where he is at all times because he's coming straight for you. He is a downhill runner. He's got the speed to finish and hit home runs, so don't take the bruiser nature of his running ability as like a weakness. He can kind of do it all, but he wants contact. He wants to have – yards after contact because that's just the style of runner that he is he's been undervalued really for a couple of years now this isn't something that you know this year he's just become the guy I mean he has been a really valuable piece for Kentucky's offense so to me he is their best player he's the bell cow when you look at you know what he's done in his career he's always had a a positive uh yards after contact deal like one of the best in the conference so it's going to be a, a matchup that worries me a little bit because we saw UCLA with Charbonnet and Britton Brown Ooh. have a lot of success, Yeah, right? 
physical, tough runners running behind a good offensive line, that's what you're going to get with Chris Rodriguez. Uh, a year ago, he had 785 yards, six and a half yards per carry. You go back to his sophomore year, he had 533 yards on only 71 carries, so he had seven and a half yards per carry. Jeremy Hill numbers are there. He both. is, uh, man, I'm telling you, he had 11 rushing touchdowns a year ago. He's already got four this year. Now he's not a threat out of the backfield to catch the football, but again, you're not going to have to look hard to find Chris Rodriguez. No, also he doesn't wear gloves now, which still just looks like, look how crazy that looks if you're watching online right now. This is a psychopath move. It's not as psychopath as Vita Vea doing it in the trenches, which is the ultimate power move, but no gloves on a running back is pretty blue collar. Michael Ford used to do that for LSU back in the day. Uh, he w- Michael Ford was no wristbands, Nothing. no tape, Nothing. no gloves, just wrong. But I mean, dude, if I had Ford's arms, I don't know if I would hide that light under any know, bushels either. I don't know, but if you put that little oh, skinny yeah. wristband yeah. right at your elbow, yeah. it makes him look even bigger. You go right at the elbow and then between the shoulder and the bicep and you get that extra pump. Yeah. It's like one of those rings that you could put on to kind of cut off circulation and really maximize. Except it's not. It's a lot different. Um, Junior ride receiver Wandale Robinson is the other name that you need to know. The only wide receiver in the SEC with more yards than Kayshawn Butte. Leads away with 467. He averages 16 yards a catch. He's only gone for three scores this year, but basically he's averaging six catches, 93 yards per game. Kayshawn averaging six catches, 87 yards per game. So... Chris Rodriguez and Wandell Robinson, the two offensive names you need to know, a hell of a tag team offensively, right? You're talking about two guys that if you go in the yards from scrimmage stat per game, they are second and fifth in the SEC. And that's individual, right? Uh, Rodriguez at 128 per game, Wandell Robinson at 109 per game. Also, it's kind of crazy because Will Levis only averages 200 a game. So literally 50% of his production goes to Wondell Robinson. To tell you how much different Wondell Robinson's game is this year compared to what it was last year, 2020 he had 51 catches for 461 yards. Okay, it's nine yards per catch. Not a great average. Like you try to get above 10. This year in only 29 catches he has 467 yards. So he has more yards on 22 less catches. So he has been a big play threat. He has a long of 62. He also has ran the ball for a long of 64. They will get him involved. And in his career, when you go back and you look at his sophomore or freshman and sophomore year, his freshman year he had 340 yards rushing, and in his sophomore season he had 240 yards rushing. So this is someone you will see him everywhere. You'll see him line up everywhere. He'll get the push pass. He'll get it all. He is their big play, we need a home run threat, and – he scares the daylights out of you. Yeah. So are you 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 were kind of talking in the break a little bit there to break the golden rule here, and you think that? Let me good, go ahead and do uh, it. Yeah. <laughs> you, you think you think that there's a good chance that Robinson could? You you got to be bust careful. One yeah. Against LSU. Yeah. Absolutely. You have to be careful with him. You have to know who you have covering him. You've got to put someone that you trust mentally to cover him. Because if you give him a seam, right, if you have a busted coverage and, and one guy's out of position, he will turn it up and he will leave you. That's just who he is. He has shown you in the running game and in the passing game he can do it. And it, it makes me a little nervous. Yeah, you, you got to be on your game when you're covering him. That's why, you know, Cordell Flott, he's been really, really consistent. If you've got a guy like Robinson who kind of can line up everywhere – Cordell Flott, right, with the way he's playing, I'd love to see these two matched up. Yeah, and look, and maybe Jay Ward helps fight against any busted coverages as uh, the communication has looked really good since Ward has been back for the most part. Um, it's it's Yeah, because like against UCLA, what was it? It was, it was busted coverages and then a, a pounding running game that ended up doing you in. The potential for a similar kind of formula is on the table right now. They, they, LSU just got to yeah. avoid it. UCLA did not have a Wondell Robinson on their team. No, no. But 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 I don't think Kentucky's tight end is uh, also like you know. Baby no, that's one of the best. Or anything, one of the best but, in yeah, the country that they had either. So. Uh, but they definitely have a uh, a two headed monster at running back, and I know that we've got him here on on the notes that you did, T. Bob. But Cavassier Smoke. Yeah, he's he's not not having as much of an impact as I thought. I think it's because Chris Rodriguez is doing so well. Yeah. Again, like even with the fumbles, even with the four fumbles, Chris Rodriguez is staying in there and getting carries because he's been so effective. Cavassier Smoke is someone. That when you look at a year ago, I mean, he was on the same level as Chris Rodriguez, yeah. and they had Rose. They really had three running backs last year, so this is a um, this is a complete offense. Now the the numbers again are a little surprising, 
just knowing the personnel that they have. A receiver, they are like behind Robinson, but they have very worthy skill players in this offense. Yeah, it seems like the disconnect maybe in this individual success and how good the lines are and maybe some of the overall team ranking numbers. I mean, I guess I'm have to trace a lot of that back to turnovers. I mean, yeah. if you're turning the ball over that much, you're losing and cutting short possessions, so you're quite literally taking away stats from yourself. I mean, it's tough to say because it's not like they're penalized a lot, as we said. Uh, so, okay, real quick defensively, uh, their leading tackler is DeAndre Square, senior inside linebacker, which is exactly where you want your senior right. He averages seven tackles a game, eighth in the SC, not bad. Uh, their, their, their best pass rusher, J.J. Weaver, leads the team with three and a half sacks in the year. Uh, but it seems like maybe the most disruptive player is a senior defensive end, John Pascal. He has yes. six and a half TFLs. That's the guy that else you really going to have to be worried about. Yeah, he's yeah, he's the one. Like I know he doesn't lead the team in sacks, but he is creating pressure. He's a Sunday player, and again, when you're struggling in, in pass protection, although going back on, on the tape, there's some things that are improved, but it's still it's still got a long way to go in, in pass protection for LSU. He's the guy you got to pay attention to, even though he's only got the one sack. He is he is creating himself, you know, with the pressures and with the quarterback hits and those type things. So, you know, again, it's a defense that's got guys all over the place. J.J. Weaver with his four sacks, you know, they're going to blitz him. Yep. it's a situation where he is going to come. So, do you do you stay in six man protections? Do you try to buck the trend and go five man protections? They ain't going five. I they've, they've proven they're not going to I thought maybe protection. if I'd spoken into existence. No, nah, that ain't happening. Um, okay, so so really the names to look out for Chris Hunter, Jr., and Wondell Robinson. Just, there you go. Easy. Mention Wondell Robinson, and like 90% of the people probably won't know who you're talking about. I, I feel like at, it kind of depends, on, I guess, what kind of viewing party you're at. Yeah. I think uh, if you go, yeah, if you go Robinson and... DeAndre Square, I think you're you're going to look yeah, smart. People are not going to know about Square. They're just because they're like, going to know Cavassier <laughs> Smoke because it's a legendary name. Yeah, they probably heard that one before. Well, and then you can bring up Square, and you can be like, I mean, great senior play caller in the middle of that defense. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's tough. He's got great leadership. Square had that um, like shove out of play highlight. I don't know if y'all saw that. No what? Where he just randomly shoved the trainer. On yeah. the sideline, it was so Wait, that his was own it? trainer. Yeah, that was Square. Wait, that was his right own here. trainer. There's I thought that was, uh, yeah, it was his, his own same trainer. team. It was yeah. They did like a jersey switch after. He's like, man, I don't know. Like, I was just, I was in my zone. He's <laughs> <laughs> so messed up. That's dude. not cool at all. I just flashed out, dude. Like, straight up. What? What? Like, what? I don't know what? why. It's it's not cool. why? It makes me sad just watching it. Yeah, dude. That's just, dude, that's bullying. Uh, so he did apologize to him, though. They jersey swapped uh, I, out. I there? guess so. Yeah. Okay. They, they took a picture. He was, he was wearing the Kentucky equipment shirt or whatever, and the other oh. guy was wearing his jersey. I mean, bro, he lit him up. It was weird. It's like, hey, old boy popped up, though. Look at him. He ain't playing no games. Look, already on his feet now. <laughs> uh, if you're watching online, man, that's messed up. Hit the like button. Um, okay, so on the way out of here, other things that jumped out that's crazy. Damone Clark leads the SEC in tackles. 54 a game. That's not Put surprising. some respect in Damone yeah. Clark's name. He is averaging 11 tackles per game. 10.8. I'm rounding up. 11 tackles per game. And then uh, how about this? Keishon Butte is almost doubled. Second place in touchdowns, 9-5. to five. Cameron Latou, Bam, that's fine. All right, let's close out hour number one of the quick segment. Then we kick off hour number two. You already know what time it is. It's time for some clustering. Hey, hey.